supination and supination. Proximal radial ulnar and distal, distal radial ulnar. Okay, so um, we're going to measure distally. Okay, and this is the, the, I would say, the strangest of all the measurements we're going to do. So if you don't mind, Tina, turn the pages so we can look at our next landmark. But notice how I'm kind of just stabilizing the elbow. Okay, so I'm not stabilizing the radius and ulna, I'm more stabilizing the humerus and letting it fully pronate, and then I'm taking it back into full supination. Okay, and I'm going to let him rest in neutral, because likely if we're taking these measures one way or the other will be restricted or painful. Okay, so I believe the first one they're going to do is pronation. So where is our fulcrum? I don't So ulnar styloid. Once we come here, this is where we're going to line it up with. And where is our stationary arm? Parallel to the anterior midline of the humerus. Okay, so they say the stationary arm is parallel to the anterior midline of the humerus. Hmm. Just, if their arm is in neutral, point it straight up to the ceiling. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that's the easier version of how to do it. Okay, and our moving arm. It's a lot. <laughs> okay, so I'll talk you through moving arm. Basically, so we're, in all the books, they show it directly contacting the patient's skin. We're going to hover just above. Okay, so as much as possible, this is the key word, we're going to keep the fulcrum in line with the ulnar styloid. But in order to get the moving arm parallel with either this aspect of the forearm for pronation, or this aspect of the forearm for supination, the fulcrum is actually going to go up a little bit. And that's okay as long as you keep it in line with the ulnar styloid and keep the stationary arm pointed straight up. Okay, so we're going to take a look here and I'm pronating him. So this is zero. And then I get to here and I would say that's just about maybe 90, maybe a little bit more. Okay, so I'm going to preset my goni. So this is our zero. Mm -hmm. So we're going to move it to 90. I'm going to keep it right nearby. So I'm going to stabilize here, fully pronate him, making sure I'm not crossing the joint. If I'm moving him from the hand, then I'm twerking his wrist and his thumb. Twerking. <laughs> okay, so this is where I'm going to hold him. I'm going to hold right there, keep this here, ulnar styloid, but Keep it parallel to the dorsum of his hand, and we are at 91. Okay, so did you see that? I wasn't, this kind of came, the fulcrum came up a little bit, but I was still in this same plane as the ulnar styloid mm -hmm. in an attempt to get this parallel to the dorsum, and then still having this pointed straight up ahead. Okay, and you're just going to flip it over here to the palmer side to do supination. Okay, so again, I'm going to stabilize. I'm holding the radius and ulna, and I'm slowly moving them. He's a little bit limited here. Have you ever fractured your wrist? Or no. Radius? No. Uh, uh, or scaphoid? No. <laughs> I haven't broken anything. I've torn a lot of ligaments. No breaks. Okay, so I go need it. I put him back in neutral. Now I'm bringing him back. And I'm actually going to need to switch hands. Okay, so ulnar styloid is over here now. And I'm making sure this is pointed straight up. And this is going to have to be parallel. Oh my. Could you have the table a little bit higher? Yeah, I could do that. <laughs> no, I'm just asking. I don't want it too much higher because then I'm going to have to do this to stabilize it. It just looked them. like you were bending a little bit, and I was just wondering if that was too much. And no, 89, you're pretty even. 